Welcome to Abstract Illusions Radio with host Jennifer Hillman. The show explores and reveals the human potential through creativity. So enjoy the show to create a life you love. Shall we? Here we go, folks. Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Hellman and this is Abstract Illusions Radio. I want to thank you so much for listening. Today's guests are two beautiful people that I happen to connect with through Facebook and their work just inspires me and intrigues me at the same time how it all got started. It is Dana Gunnar and Ty Phillips. They are the co-founders of the Tabooed Buddha. Um, I just, I'm so very happy to have you both on. Now, Dana is a, is a, one of the co-founders, as I said. She's also the mom of three crazy kids and a dog. <laughs> um Becoming a mother is the first step of winding and rocky path to transformation. She never looked back. She has been writing stories since she could put words into sentences, writing books, poems from a ver- early on, and still completing in love with language of all kinds. She is a she- massage therapist, sign language interpreter, and a lover of language. She finds bits of enlightenment in all the connections. She also is writing for Elephant Journal, BU Media, and Rebel Society. You can connect with her on Twitter and Facebook. Ty Phillips, the other wonderful person in this Tattoo Buddha is the madness behind the making. We'll find out more about that. Um, Former big city bouncer, he was quick to anger. Now he's a pacifist, more accurately. He is a non-violent civil resistor. Taking his experience with abuse and mental illness, he created Death Mental Dharma an outreach program designed to connect with high-risk teens and prisoners. His years in, in the real world experience bouncing and being within the seedy side of society gives him a unique voice. These two people married together, not physically, but brought together their experience into a community of healing, inspiring, empowering voices. And that's one reason why I really wanted to have them on the show because they're using creative energy and heightening human potential through their work. So I thank you both very much. I apologize for maybe screwing up your intros a little bit, but... (laughs) <laughs> I'm human. Okay. So, Ty, what do you mean by yeah. bouncing around? What do you mean by... I was actually, I was actually a bouncer. Um, bouncer. That's nightclubs. what I thought. Um, yeah, I worked in downtown Cleveland for about 10 years as a bouncer. So, and we were talking before and you said martial arts kind of was the beginning of you finding Buddhism. And mm-hmm. becoming actually a, a Buddhist priest, which I didn't mention in your intro, which I really should have. That's so, okay. you're also a full time dad as well. Do you think being a parent, and this question goes to you and Dana, do you think it makes you more inspired and more driven and motivated for? the future generations to do what you're doing now? Absolutely. Um, Having kids completely changes your perspective on everything, especially when it comes to uh, human interaction. And for me, uh, violence, mental health, 
things like that because you see so much of your reflection in them and every mistake that you make or every wrong decision whether you know no one's perfect but you'll see that reflected in them and you see yourself and you're just your jaw kind of drops on what you've done right and what you've done wrong and how you want to change that because you want things to be better for them. Dana? Um, I agree. Yeah. Um, my kids have been my best teacher, actually. So, definitely. Now, Dana, you also on on the site, have, or you've been writing so much about connecting with your niece and having that experience really of opening your heart and your home at the same time. Do you feel that another reason for you to start this wonderful community? Just um, to open yourself up that way? I don't know if that one experience has really made a difference. I mean, all of the experiences have everything <laughs> that has led me to here has. So I don't know if it was really that one thing. Okay. So... Okay, let's let's get to the heart of the matter. How did this come about? How did you decide to do Tattoo Buddha? Uh, you want me to take that one, Dana? Yep. Okay. Um, I actually started a personal blog called The Tattooed Buddhist, um, and it was about my life experiences as a former bouncer who turned into um, a pacifist and a Buddhist and having um, a severe... Um, I guess you could say life crisis. I almost died, uh, and writing about coming back from that and it, its impact on my out, outlook and what have you. And Dana ended up editing uh, a piece of mine, and we connected and we started talking. And we both had become kind of disillusioned with a lot of the publications that were out there who said that they spoke for the mindfulness community and what it seemed more like they were doing was just promoting clickbait and sex articles. Mm -hmm. And it really had nothing to do with the mindfulness community. And so we started chatting and decided we should do that on our own, we'll create what we wanted to see out there and what we thought others really wanted to see out there. And so we changed it from the Tattooed Buddhist to the Tattooed Buddha uh, and made it more of a general community for all writers who had an unusual perspective or an unusual background and something that they felt was vital to, you know, moving forward with a, a healthy dialogue and a better world and what have you. And, and you cover... All subjects, though, you really reach all different cultures and even government issues as well. It And so it really is, to me, it's like the future generation kind of community that we're all looking for. How do you select the subjects and the writers? I mean, you do open it up for others to um, submit articles and you do have some guidelines for them. Um, but did you really feel that it would cover as much as it is and as deep it is? I mean, people are really expressing a lot of dissatisfaction, yet trying to find the center within themselves in your articles. We were really surprised um, at the, the turnaround it's had. Um, because it started out simply as me writing about Buddhism in my life. Um, and Dana had so many connections with the writing world and with her experience editing for larger publications. And she knew other writers who wanted to express themselves. And it really just grew on its own. Um, and as we started talking with other people, they brought in other people and they brought in other people. And it really just snowballed. And it, it's really blown us away as to how many people have wanted to get involved and share their feelings and their opinions and who have just reacted to what Dana and I were doing initially has grown into this. And it's been a huge blessing for both of us. Now, it's it's really is only about six months old, correct? Yeah. Right. And, and how many people are following or a part of your community now? A rough uh, estimate. Facebook is, Facebook is creeping up to about 3,500. Um, as far as writers, I'm not actually sure that Dana um, really takes uh, the brunt of the writing and the editing and what have you. She's really the driving force behind what it's become. Um, so that that would have to be a Dana question. We have um, almost 500 published posts so far. And um, I think we're up to around 200 followers on Instagram. I'm not sure what we are on Twitter. But um, 
you know, our views are growing constantly and it's just amazing every single day how it grows. Um, I was looking at our, our statistics the other day and we didn't even have that many published posts that particular day and we still had a lot of views. So it's just amazing. It, it, it hits. Go on. We'd actually, we've actually been getting writers from other countries now too. Mm -hmm. What Dana told me about, I think we had, um, I know we've had people from Canada, but we had people from overseas. Um, we've had people from Malaysia and, um, I think, did you say Sweden, Dana? Um, Australia, Albania, Australia. um, England. Yeah. Which really blew me away because I, I have no connections over there and it just started growing and people started submitting from other countries, which was awesome. Really. Yeah. Right. And you, um, <coughs> had Ian Lofton's piece about his project and he's going to be another guest and I found him through you and he has you very prominently on his website is supporting his project so you're getting some exposure through him as well not just wanted to let you guys know so um you guys seem to come together at the right time um, with all the shifting energies that are coming around right now I think um, a lot of people are looking for that centered calmness and you find it here even though there's people expressing a lot of different happenings and going on and the chaos that's happening they always try and find and normally they really do that center core to bring us all back to center and and that's what i appreciate about all the pieces that i've read on your on your i don't even want it's a community it's not even a blog it's not it's just a community and it's a very strong one and i really see it growing even more i think you guys are gonna get blown away how fast it's gonna be going um, I mean, the radio show, the radio program that I'm part of has over two to three million people listening. Oh, wow. So, um, I did not realize it was that big till recently. It's like, okay, this is good to know. Um, so, amazing. so it's a really strong, and I really feel that you guys are heading up because I know a collaboration is a huge part of the new energy coming in and that's exactly what the community does it's very supportive so what were your initial goals with this this group with this blog as you uh, started this um Initially, it really was to create um, a publication that really focused on what it said it was going to do. You know, we we didn't want any clickbait. We didn't want any sex articles. Not that there's an issue with sex, but that it becomes overpowering in most publications where once sex becomes a topic, it becomes the only topic. So we... We put a squash on that. We weren't going to have any clickbait. We didn't want authors competing with one another. We wanted it to be a supportive community. And it really turned into that. Um, and I think in large part because we don't have direct competition with each other. We're not trying to get people to outperform one another. We're trying to get them to help each other perform better as opposed to the other way around. Um, and it was just putting quality quality writing out there and quality work and it's you know the the authors on a large part have found us like you said that ian uh actually became a contact through another one of our authors daniel sharpenberg who's had a ton of people brought to us um and he got the interview going with him and just brought everything together and it's again another one of those things where we were blessed because one of our uh contributors believed in us and brought us another platform to use one of the things that has really been helpful is that Ty and I agree on a lot of stuff. 
Um, we both have the same ideals. We both have the same, uh, a lot of the same morals, um, what we want to see develop into this. So that has really helped. Um, we don't usually disagree on what we want to do going forward. So, you know, if I say, hey, how about this? You know, he says, yeah, okay, or vice versa. So that's really helped. Mm-hmm. So, Dana, you are, as the editor, for the most part, um, and you're also, from this, doing writing workshops, correct? Right. We're having our first writing workshop starting soon, July 6th, actually. And and what will that be like, or what is the goal for your writing workshop? Well, I have a lot of writers that ask me to um, preview their work before they send it in, or they ask for some advice or feedback on how to improve it. And um, that's almost a daily occurrence. And so I thought it might be nice to cover a lot of things all in one session type thing. So it's going to be three weeks, um, and emails are sent out twice a week. Mondays and Wednesdays, and I'm going to cover topics like Associated Press format, grammar, um, how to hook your your reader in the beginning, how to close a piece, um, things like that, how to improve your flow throughout the piece, um, using different words so you're not using redundant words over and over and over again, you know. Like Notion? Kind of like Notion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use the word notion all the time in my writing, and Dana's always giving me a hard time challenging me to use another word besides notion. So now I put it in there on purpose just so she has something to make fun of me for. Just to make sure she's awake. Um, but notion is a great word. I really like that word myself. So, Dana, what is your background with writing? I mean, you've loved writing all your life as soon as you knew. What is this love affair with language for you? Um, well, I've just always written things since I was a kid, since I could write. I started writing books and poems and, you know, did the whole young authors thing as a kid and everything. But um, <clears throat> professionally, I started out as an apprentice for Elephant Journal and, um, and then soon became a columnist. <clears throat> and um, then I moved over to BU Media and Rebel Society. And I've done editing for both of those places. And um, I edited a book. Um, and I'm editing another book right now. So, you know, between the, the editing and the writing, that's kind of where it all came from. Now, d now do you have a, a website for your services? No, I don't. <laughs> it's a little hard to keep up with everything. Um, really, my focus is um, the Tattooed Buddha. And then I do, I do still some light editing for Rebel Society and some side editing as well. So do you plan to, I'm putting you on the spot here, publish another book? Anytime I don't, soon. <laughs> I don't have any books published. <laughs> I'd like to write a book, um, but it's um, something I'd have to make time for. Because right, I've just read some of your inspirational little, and they always are, no matter what you're writing. It's just like, wow, she's got to make, she's got to do a book. She's just got to do a book. Um, so... Well, maybe at some point, but right now Ty is actually writing a book. Are you now? And what is your book about? Are, are you putting your, and have you ever thought about putting your blogs from the original idea, Buddhist, into a book and expanding um, it? it? It's kind of what we're doing. Um, it, we're still bouncing back and forth on a title, but it's something along the lines of, uh, bouncer meets the Buddha and it's about my life experiences um, you know fighting working downtown being stabbed and shot and um, having serious health problems later on and then coming back to Buddhism and changing my life and what have you so that's kind of the running theme for the book actually 
Now, tell us more about your death mental, metal dharma program. Death metal dharma. Uh, I was working for quite some time, um, Ravenhood, uh, Ravenwood Mental Health Systems with um, abused and addicted teenagers. Uh, and the outreach programs that most people are familiar with, like AA or traditional mental health programs, um, like Ravenhood, have a very low efficacy rate, um, almost 80 plus percent failure rate on their turnaround. So it, it's not really reaching the kids. It's not working. Even with adults, um, AA has like some, I think only a 4% positive turnaround. Everything is largely uh, a failure in mental health and addiction programs. And so Death Metal Dharma was my experience um, in the city with a passion for heavy metal music and real life experience that that connected with, with inner city kids who were coming up from a violent background, who've had abusive parents, who have struggled with addiction, who have struggled with violence and putting Buddhism into a perspective that they could understand a, a common um, inner city American vernacular where they could relate to it and see the difference that it makes in your life simply by changing their perspective on their behavior as opposed to giving them moral absolutes and guilts and you're going to hells and you need to be mm -hmm. in rehab and you need to do this that gives them the chance to change their own thinking um, and that was really the driving force behind that um, and then I wanted to push it into a prison program and I, I had a chance to work with a few prisoners for a little bit of time, but the drive time um, and the ability for uh, more prisoner, a uh, larger prison population wasn't conducive at the time. So it's something that I'm going to have to look at into the future again. Um, just a suggestion, that would be an mm -hmm. ideal book again. Death Metal Dharma? Yes. The, the, um, the no, idea that of it is just, I could see kids reading it and getting, hey, maybe this is something. Well, that was actually the, the original title. It was a small ebook that I published on my first site. And so we've made it larger scale and turned it into a Bouncer Meets the Buddha so that it's okay. um, open okay. to not just teens, but to a larger population who identifies with that background. I got two nephew, grand nephews. I don't know. It's my nephew's sons. I don't know what to call them, but they could really use your program right now. <laughs> really use it. Um, so with um, all that you guys are doing, you both are very dedicated to your family. How do you guys make time for everything else you're doing? I mean, how do you find that balance? to have some kind of spiritual practice and yet be part of the real world at the same time? Um, I think the big thing is is not seeing your life and your daily interactions as separate from your spiritual practice. If your spiritual practice isn't brought into everything that you're doing, including your family life, your cooking, your grocery shopping, you know, taking your car to the gas station, everything that you're doing, then it, it's, it's kind of defeating the purpose. And I think a lot of people have that notion where it's something separate. It has to be a blocked out piece of time um, where they practice their spirituality. But in, in reality, that compartmentalization of spirituality from real life is a hindrance, I think. And if it's it's not conducive, if it's not done together, it, it, there's really no point in doing it. And Dana, but do it, you... Th I, I, but I, having time to block out family and to do the Tattooed Buddha and to all the other programs is hard. I know both Dana and I are very tired um, quite a bit of the time, especially Dana. Dana takes a lot on her plate, you know, working with all the writers and editing a large majority of the pieces, um, doing the website design. She really is the driving force behind this now. And if it wasn't for her, we probably wouldn't be here. So Dana, how do you do it? What's, what's your magic? Um, what's your secret? Uh, I, I don't have one. 
I guess the only thing I can say is I'm I'm kind of highly driven, highly driven. and so I, I from the moment I get up, um, I don't stop, and um, until I go to bed, and then I don't sleep well. So if I'm not sleeping, then I I do things in the middle of the night too. So it's just who I am. And have you been this way, Dana, all your life? This driven? <clears throat> um, no. Not really. Um, I don't know. I just think um, I sort of changed after a while. Um, I kind of let a lot of things just sort of happen to me and um, just let everybody kind of lead me around. And then at some point I decided to stop doing that and and started doing what I wanted to do. And once I had that, um, I just didn't look back. Where do you see this going? Do, I mean, Dana, do you feel you're going to be doing the the workshops like three, four times a year? Or what are your plans for the the, the workshops? I don't really know. Um, I kind of just sort of play everything by ear and see how it goes. So if it's successful and people want it, then sure, I, I can do it some more. And if it doesn't work out, then we'll we'll change and try something different. So, what what are your plans for the future of of the website? Um, that that's a good question. <laughs> because <laughs> because we're so new, we really are still playing things by ear and seeing what people react to and what they want more of. And as long as it stays within the parameters of what our founding mission was, we'll go forward with that. You know, we want to have large retreats with our authors and our followers where we bring in teachers and offer teachings and meditation courses in um, a serene or quote unquote spiritual setting where people feel like they can just focus on that and get a break from you know the hectic struggle of day-to-day -day living and what have you and bring it back to their lives and we want to have more workshops want to have more meditation intensive writing seminars you know, things like that as it grows. But it, right now, it's really just trying to keep control, uh, growing our base so that we can do things like that. Another thing that's really important to both Ty and me is um, charity. And we really, um, one of the things we did with the meditation intensive, and this was Ty's idea, was to um, donate to the Nepal Foundation. I'm not sure which one it was exactly, but, um, and that's something we'd like to continue doing is, is to donate um, anytime we can. And that's mm -hmm. beautiful. And believe it or not, our time is up. Um, you guys, I just want to say, inspire me every day with everything you do. So I thank you for meeting and moving forward with this idea. And I can't wait to read your book, Ty, and, and get even more information about and have you back on again to talk about that book and dana you sure. your workshops are going to be like i said i can see you doing them several times because i think <laughs> it's going to be very successful so with this i thank ty and diane dana to of of the tattoo buddha for coming on the show check them out on facebook check out all the wonderful work they're doing on their website. And again, um, many blessings to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be on. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this.